This video shows you how to use the Disaster Prediction app, currently available for iPhones and Android devices. When you download the app and get it open, you'll see the opening screen with the three main navigation buttons to utilize and control the primary functions of the app. Apple users also have a button bar along the bottom of the screen, allowing for another way to navigate, and Android users have the menu accessed by the three lines in the top corner of the screen. That will be the easiest way for Android users to jump around the app without returning to the home page. While this app is supposed to be half about earthquakes and half about space weather, when your earthquake forecasting model is putting out alert maps that capture 70% of the largest earthquakes within the highest alert zones, that naturally becomes the focus of the moment. So, first link, opening page, takes you to those alert maps. Description is always found right below. The stats button in the top corner there, or for Android users, the prediction stats button on your menu, takes you to the largest earthquakes list, all the ones that have happened during the model run. Both this page and the alert maps are zoomable in case you want to look in a little closer. For those wishing to learn more about the forecasting model, the success rate, the validation, and the foundational research, QuakeWatch.net is the home. Four shock patterns, earthquake lights, electromagnetic fluctuations, the most robust pre-seismic signals identified over the last half century by some of the world's best scientists was analyzed and combined into something that is actually a step towards real-world earthquake warnings just like those that currently exist for hurricanes. The basic introduction paper to the forecasting can be read online or downloaded for free, and every single forecast, a verification link, and success notes with more links can be found there. Getting back to the app, the second button on the home page goes to your risk factors page. Space weather combines sunspots and coronal holes to offer the chances for solar storms to occur and to affect Earth. A sunspot identification image is shown if you click the space weather button. The combined sunspot and coronal hole risk score is available in three different time length charts. The earthquakes button in the middle is all about coronal holes but seeks to gauge the potential for their magnetic fields and electromagnetic emissions to affect seismic events rather than for the space weather risk from their solar wind to Earth's magnetic field that combined with sunspots for the space weather risk score. To learn more about coronal holes and earthquakes, go to quakewatch.net and find that first button in the menu bar, coronal hole earthquake factor in blue, right under the red subheading earthquake prediction center. The third panel shows the geomagnetic score. It is a predictive KP index model developed by Nine Risi to deliver warnings of solar storms even earlier than on the official charts. Coming back to the home page, that third button there takes you to your notification settings. Of course, Android users, you can get there through your menu as well. The notification settings look different for some different devices, but essentially there's no real difference. Everyone has the same options. Let's go through them. Critical alerts turn off at your own risk. This is one of the main reasons to have the app. If something major happens, we've got the detection alerts and manual ones I can send. These will be for major catastrophes only, but if they happen, I'll be able to reach you right away. I recommend observers alerts stay on as well. These are important notes that come through there, and also all the cosmic ray health alerts. Under space weather, I won't turn on moderate alerts until the throes of solar minimum and we're awaiting even the slightest sign of sunspots, otherwise you likely only need the significant alerts turned on. Under the earthquakes list, frankly, you don't need the first one on. It is meant to show up to 30 to 60 percent of the days when corona holes are more likely to affect the ground than not. The only one of these I really recommend having on is the last one, events, which has the actual earthquake event alerts reporting at speeds that match the current fastest apps in the world for reporting earthquakes. For geomagnetic storms, everyone should have the higher level alerts on in case those events occur. And for cardiac patients, you'll need to have on all three. More on that coming in a moment. Last notification is the solar flare events. This will send an alert automatically upon the occurrence of an X-ray solar flare breaking into M-class, followed by an observer's alert detailing the event in summary. You can poke around the other pages at your leisure, but before you do, be sure to go read through the info page for some good information on the app features, and also down at the bottom of that page, one of the most important bits of information you can have. If you get a prompt like this, just click go or yes, whatever you see, 
Feel free to flip your phone sideways as it is responsive and zoomable. Learn what the different alerts and events mean for those already at risk for certain health issues whenever the space weather occurs. To learn more about space weather events and their effects, be sure to head over to spaceweathernews.com. Click What is Space Weather on the top right for a crash course in the topic. And below, everything you need to keep up to date on the sun.